On today's episode, we are gonna be doing some DIY IKEA hacks that I'm really excited about. Now, I normally at this point would take you inside IKEA, we'd go shopping for some stuff, but we're gonna be doing something a little different this time. We are gonna be shopping my own house. When we first purchased this home, it was a vacation rental, so it came fully furnished with a lot of IKEA stuff. We're gonna be making some of those over today, so let's get started. <laughs> For my first DIY, we are gonna be making over the Hemonies dresser that's in my master bedroom. It's functioned really good for us, but it's a little bit boring. We're gonna just add a little bit of trim and paint and some new knobs and it will look so amazing. I'm excited about this. So we're gonna renovate this in place in my bedroom. And I know that that seems crazy, but I like to live life on the edge. <laughs> I don't really wanna haul it all the way downstairs to haul it all the way back up. So I've got a couple of hacks of how we're gonna keep this as neat and clean as possible because I don't wanna make a mess in my bedroom. So we're gonna keep this as tidy as possible. It's gonna be fun. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna get the dimensions of all of our drawers. This is eight inches tall and it's 13 and a quarter wide and then the bottom ones are 27 and 3 eighths and 8 inches tall and the very bottom drawers are a little bit taller than the middle ones at 10 and 3 quarter inches those are the dimensions of the drawers and we need that because we're going to be adding trim and that's really what's going to dress up this piece we're going to be using primarily two trims and the first is this just kind of i think it's a half inch by three quarter inch flat piece of molding i picked this up at home Home Depot and then I've got this kind of molding and we are gonna layer that on the inside that's the trim that we're gonna be using we're gonna cut it down to dimensions now these are just simple cuts so you could do these on a miter box since I have access to a miter saw it just makes life so much easier so we're gonna just take them outside make all the cuts but before we make our cuts we need to remove all of the knobs and give the dresser a good cleaning So we can avoid a bazillion trips up and down the stairs. We are gonna make a lot of cuts and take it all up with us. You could miter this if you wanted to, just for ease and simplicity. We are gonna just do butt joints. I think once we putty everything, it will look great. And we're gonna do the width first and then we'll do the height. So now that we have all of our outside wood cut, we're gonna just bust this out. I'm gonna be using my Brad Neller and it's gonna just make very quick work of this. So we're gonna start with the top piece. Because there's a little bit of a gap here and there's not on the other ones, I'm gonna try to raise this just a touch. We'll get the first corner on and then we can make sure it's level from there. We'll only have to do this on the top row because we can line it up with the drawers beyond that. So we are going to just place the trim on the top of all of the drawers first. This is going to make sure that we have a good starting point to get nice tight joints. You're gonna wanna make sure your pieces are level and all even with one another. Next, we are going to nail in one of the side pieces and get it nice and secure up against that top piece. Then we are going to take a bottom piece and snug that right underneath that side piece and only stick in one nail on that side. Then we're gonna go on the opposite side and put in our other side piece and get that nice and snug. And then finally, we're gonna snug up that bottom piece and put a nail on that side and then you can add an additional nail or two where you think you need them after that. Now I did this different for years and I would do the top and bottom pieces and then I would do the side piece pieces last. And I don't know why I did this because I always ended up having frustration about them being too long, too short. And ultimately I ended up using a whole lot of putty to fill in the gaps. And I wish that I had figured out this system a lot sooner because you end up with much tighter joints and needing a whole lot less putty and so <laughs> it was just so frustrating before so I wish I had figured out this process sooner because it just really works well 
So I hope that that made sense to you and you can see what I'm doing well and I hope it saves you some headache going forward. While we still will be using putty, it will be just a whole lot less. And also you can see how easy having a brad nailer makes this job. No more smashed fingers, no more tired arms, and it takes a whole lot less time. This next part is going to be pretty cool because we're going to be using miter shears so we don't even need to use a saw. This stuff is thin enough. It still has some decorative edges to it and I will just show you how we're going to do this. So we're going to set it in here like so and cut it on a 45 degree angle. See how easy that cuts through it like butter. We can just kind of hold it up to here. You can use a measuring tape if you want to. Okay, let's see if we did a good job. Nice, and then that will just add a little extra decorative edge and we'll just put that all the way around. Actually, we can use this as a, a template and we'll just kind of assembly line it like we've been doing. Just put this in here like so. We can get a pattern for this one now. Perfect, nice tight fit in there. And then we just wrap the inside of the trim on each and every drawer. And this really adds a nice finishing detail. Here's another close-up of me doing the inside of the drawer. And here's what it looks like with all of the trim on the inside and this makes me so excited. Now I didn't want to leave the sides unfinished so I add a piece of trim to both the top and the bottom on both sides of the dresser. Can you believe these are just large paint sticks that I cut down to fit? Isn't that fun? And then we trim it out like we did on the inside of our drawers with the same decorative trim. Then we fill in all of the seams and all of the nail holes with putty. We let that dry. And then we come back in and sand everything down with a sanding sponge, making sure to also get the dark IKEA finish scuffed up a bit as well. And then we wipe everything down, getting all of the dust, and we are ready to paint. And I promised you a lazy painting hack. Now the proper thing to do is to remove everything from your drawers, maybe even pull out your drawers entirely. But here's a little hack for you. Take some Glad press and seal wrap and wrap it around your drawers and press it down really good into place. I was still able to open and close my drawers as I needed and my clothes were protected and my husband's clothes were protected and we didn't get anything on them, I promise. I did this to all of my drawers and then since I am painting on carpet, I wanted to lift up the legs a bit so that I took a couple of squares of wood and put them underneath the legs to prevent it from, kind of from sinking down into the carpet and potentially ruining the paint job on the legs. Then I just took some painter's paper and painter's tape and taped everything off. And that, my friends, is how you paint a dresser the absolutely laziest way possible. <laughs> and then once we had everything prepped, we just primed everything and let it dry. Mm -hmm. 
And then I added two coats of Dorian Gray paint, which I had mixed at Home Depot, but I do think it's a Sherwin-Williams color. And I am just waiting for all of the comments to come in on this, but I promise you, I didn't get a single drop of paint on my carpet or my clothes. Everything worked out just fine. After all of the paint coats dried, all I did was add some Badgley Mishka crystal knobs that I ordered off of Amazon and I will provide a link for. They are so gorgeous and sound super expensive, <laughs> but I promise they were only $2 a knob and that's it. I love how this turned out. Every time I look at it, I smile. I cannot believe that it is an Ikea piece. Now, Pottery Barn has a dresser that's very similar. I believe it's around $1,500 and it doesn't have the pretty crystal knobs. So I kind of prefer our version. I am just so happy and proud of how this turned out. And the fun thing is, is you can pick out any color and have it match your decor perfectly. This dresser has me so excited to do another bedroom makeover and kind of finally finish off this room to how I want it to be. It turned out so good. It's really lit a fire under me. For today's episode, I planned something really fun for you. I reached out to Ana Sofia from Fia Garcia, say that five times fast, and asked her if she would like to collaborate. She does some amazing IKEA hacks. You're gonna love her channel. So after you're done watching this episode, make sure you pop on over to her channel, check out what she's done for you. And I'm so excited. I know it's gonna be great. For our next Ikea hack, we are gonna be using this ball and this cement pot. I just love this cement pot. It is so classy. And we're gonna just combine this and make a topiary. It's gonna be awesome, but we're gonna zhuzh it up a little bit. I found some French labels on Pinterest and I converted them into a stencil that I made on my Cricut machine. I take some gray craft paint that I already had on hand and mix it in with this black chalkboard paint that I recently picked up from the Dollar Tree until I'm happy with the color. Then I carefully paint that on. I allow it to fully dry and then I peel back the stencil. Isn't this so cute? Then I just shove in a whole bunch of floral foam that I have on hand and some random white foam I had as well. And then I also place a wood dowel that was from a previous project that was already antiqued with some antiquing wax. And I just place that in the center and then I make sure it is tight with foam. For some added security, I also add a ton of hot glue around the dowel to hold it into place. Sorry for about the blurriness on my camera. It decided to focus on the dowel and it just happened. <laughs> then I take some green moss sheets from the Dollar Tree and I cut that out to fit and hide our foam. Now to get the balls to slide down our dowel, we need to cut holes through them, which I do with a various array of cutting devices. <laughs> I couldn't decide which one to use. Just find anything that works. And I just pushed my first one down to a few inches above the pot line. And then I repeated the process on our last decorative ball. But this time I only cut one opening because we want the top part of that ball to sit on the top part of the dowel, if that makes sense. Then we just slide that on. Now with them in place, I take a drill and drill a little hole near the bottom of each ball to thread some wire through to kind of wire them into place. And then for some added security, you can always add uh, some hot glue as well. That Gorilla hot glue is really strong. This was honestly really easy to put together and it's so cute. I love the colors. I love the overall classy high-end feel that it has, but what do you think?
So as a part of our home purchase, we inherited a couple of these nightstands. And as they are, they're a little bit basic, but I want to do just something super easy with them. And so we are gonna be taking these Dollar Tree ceiling tin tiles that you can find in the kitchen section. And we are gonna put stickers on the nightstand. I don't know how many times as a mom, I have said, stop putting stickers on your furniture. And we're gonna go ahead and break that roll right now. And we are gonna literally just line these up on the edge and they actually fit freakishly perfect. And boom. So you're going to need four stickers to stick on the fronts of the drawers. Honestly, I think it kind of looks cool like this. You could almost get away with this, but we're gonna design this to the nines and take it up a little bit extra. And so we're going to take some of that same square trim from our dresser upgrade and trim out the outside of the drawer and then one piece for the middle to hide the seams. And you can cut these out on a miter box, but because I have the miter saw, it just does make such quick work of things. Then we just nail them into place, kind of like we did before. Actually, here you see me doing the top and the bottom then the sides i actually did this one before the dresser and this was the impetus for my new way of doing things so do it the way i like i taught you just a little bit ago and not this way it will save yourself a headache Then I wanted to just finish off the base of the nightstand a little bit more. So I took a piece of flat trim that I believe is two and a half inches wide and about a quarter of an inch thick. And I cut that down and nailed it into place. We putty like we did before on the dresser and let that dry. and sand it down. And I figured since everything was already dusty, I would just go ahead and pre-drill the holes for the knobs. Then of course, we're gonna wanna make sure everything is nice and clean. Then we are going to just prime the trim and the fronts of the nightstand. And that's the only area we are going to paint because I ended up color matching the original Ikea color in a sample paint size. And then we paint two coats on the front of the nightstand in that same color so we avoided having to paint the entire thing making this super quick and easy and then i just added some cute crystal knobs and i absolutely adore how this quick easy fix turned out i think this would be really cute in a little girl's room or even as end tables in a living room but in my case i think i'm going to go ahead and just donate these to someone in need because i don't really have a home for them right now except for hanging out underneath this window but I really do love how these turned out and it was such an easy process don't forget to pop on over to Fia Garcia DIY I put the link in the description box below I know she's got some amazing DIY IKEA hacks for you and if you enjoyed this episode here's another one that I think you'll like as well also if you haven't already done so consider hitting that subscribe button right there and to all of my DIY Niners I just want to remind you that you are more powerful than you know we'll see you next time bye